there from the Archbishops of Canterbury and York following the result of the EU referendum. Eternal God, light of the nations, in Christ you make all things new. Guide our nation in the coming days through the inspiration of your spirit that understanding may put an end to discord and all bitterness. Give us grace to rebuild bonds of trust that together we may work for the dignity and flourishing of all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we pray for our meeting this evening, asking God's blessing on the discussions and praying that all that we talk about, all that we hear, all that we decide may be to the benefit of all and not just the few. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 I would ask you all to remain standing. We will now take a minute's silence for one of our own. Councillor Jane Kibber. Sorry. Okay, good evening everybody. We will, na we will now take apologies for absence. Madam Mayor, we have apologies from Councillors Croxton, Cubitt, Knight and Thompson. Moving on. Number two, minutes of the meeting, Tuesday the 10th of May of Council. Could we have permission to sign these as correct? Are there any de declarations of interest, please? Next. Questions from the public. To answer any questions received from members of the public of which notice has been given under Council Procedure Rule 13, are there any? None have been received, Madam Mayor. Okay. Number five. We now go on to ad adopt the meetings of uh, the reports of the following meetings. Minutes of the meeting on Wednesday, the 25th of May, the, reg the regulatory board, and also, and also the 14th of June. Are we agreed? I'm, I'm Madam Mayor, I so move. And a seconder? Okay. Minutes of the meeting of Monday the 6th of June, Cabinet. Please move, uh, Madam Mayor. Somebody will help you, don't they? Yes, please. That's very kind of you. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Minutes of the meeting Thursday the 9th of June of the Overview Scrutiny Committee. Please move, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Please a second, Madam Mayor. Agreed. Uh, next is minutes of the meeting, Thursday the 16th of June, of finance and audit. Minutes to follow. Yep. Madam Mayor, before I move this to approval, I'd like to uh, draw members' uh, attention to the... Um, to the...
Minutes agreed? Agreed. Okay. Okay. Reserved items? There are none. Okay. Are we doing this one? Right. To consider reports from officers of the council. And it's number seven on your agenda, which is the Clock Tower Restoration Scheme. Madam Mayor, there is a recommendation <coughs> in that report, uh, and I ask the Council to support it. I have people who want to speak. Councillor Colin Callow. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it's appropriate um, to take this opportunity um, to speak on this item. Um, this item, I, most of us will know, uh, came about, or the general work around the clock tower and the Milton Road area came started in about 2013. Um, this is the culmination, really, of a brainchild of someone with just skills in mimic sadness, uh, uh, Jane Privet. She, it was her, once she got re-elected to county council, she understood the, uh, the, the degeneration of that end of town. She, she saw what was going on with rezoning around the clock tower area and the dilapidated state that some of that area had started to look in. And as a consequence of that, she decided uh, that she would like to use some of her KCC member funds in order to uh, get that work done. And I think that, or, or to get some, something done there. And I think it's a testament to our count, uh, borough councillors and county councillors in their civic life and duties can contribute to the residents and the well-being of the town. And I think this is uh, perhaps an apt time and a, uh, a prime uh, item to bring that up. Because it, it was her that started it with, first off, understanding that the council already had uh, a bit of money set by for that area around the clock tower and uh, wanted to um, contribute from a member fund uh, and get that matched by the borough council to bring that area up it included other things other than just the clock tower with signage paper and so on and so forth to the extent she even persuaded me to put a, a, a somewhat smaller amount of my own member fund into it to, to, to boost the funds so um, I just think that this is a testament to the work or some of the work that Jane Priven done in her time as a councillor. I believe the officers will accept it was her original idea. This was the culmination of it. The uh, lottery fund bid that eventually went in from 2013 onwards and the only real shame is she, she won't be here to see the culmination of uh, what she started. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Burden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I fully agree with the sentiments that Councillor uh, Callow just outlined there. I also noticed that we're dealing with this, this particular item as a committee report and as a recommendation, um, not as a motion. So no doubt members can come back uh, with your agreement if we want to add any, any comments because it is a report item. On that basis, um, I support the recommendation as set out. But I think the comments that Colin has just made about Jane need to be emphasised. She did do a lot of the work, if not the bulk of the work, to make sure this particular scheme came forward. Um, it was during the last administration that we really started to investigate it and do it and seek the funding from external sources. The fact that it's been successful and the council has gained and the community has gained is in large part due to Jane's tenacity in keeping on making sure that we didn't get off our agenda. There's one thing that almost constantly, Jane was solidly, almost every opportunity she had of talking to me about it, of wanting to know where we're getting on with the clock tower, why is it not moving quicker, why is it not being done yet, why is it not money to come in, why isn't the council doing more? 
she was constantly on the case about the clock tower. And I think the important thing is it's not just the clock tower. It's not just the heritage of the clock tower that she was interested in. It was about the whole environment around that part of Gratian. She was very keen to make sure that that part of Gratian wasn't forgotten. Because over the years, we have tended to forget that part of Gratian. It's a great shame. There are some fabulous buildings, flab fabulous shops there. And it's a community we have in the past babbled. For example, we spent a lot of mo money. So the more older, senior, whatever sort of members you want to call us, I'm included, we may remember back to the good old days of uh, uh, um, the, the funding that came through from some of the, the plans that we had when we did up Harmer Street. We did the balcony from Harmer Street and all that work there. Loads of money was spent there. And we've moved on. We seem to have forgotten it. We spent some money and moved on. And that sort of activity by the council should stop. We need to prize parts of our town that we've got like this. And when we're spending money like this on a part of town, start thinking what else we can do in linking up the strategies that we've got as a council to make sure the communities there genuinely benefit from this as a pump climbing thing going forward. It's not just forgetting the shops and the residents there. So well, we've done your clock tower. That's enough, isn't it, surely? And then move on. That sort of activity has got to stop. We've got to get involved with the clock tower. We've got to help the community. There are various parts of our council, KTC and other government agencies that can get involved and work with us. We need to work with those agencies to make that part of town more vibrant and better for all our community. Because it is one of our gateways into the town. And that's something we sometimes forget. That if you come from the uh, east of Grays End, you cannot fail to go past that part of Gratian. <coughs> and if you're coming through that way and you see it run down, dead, derelict, um, not quite sort of the place you want to be, why come to Gratian? That's your image of Gratian. That has got to stop. We've got to change that. And Jane's very keen, very, very keen, to stop that sort of slippage which we're constantly doing down the slope to nothing in that part of Gratian. So we have to work together. It's not that one side or the other of the council that will make this happen. That, will, that won't happen that way. We have to work together as a team to make sure that part of Gratian benefit from anything else we can lever in to that area to make sure that everybody, not just those residents and those businesses around the clock tower benefit going forward, but the entire community of Gratian, because that's the way we need to move forward. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Burden. I'm sure we've listened to that very closely and we'll all take that on board. Councillor Halpin, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, before I begin, I'm, I'm probably um, very emotional and angry and bitter uh, in <coughs> that kind of mood uh, because of recent events. Um, you know I'm talking about the football, right? <laughs> Um, but anyway, the, the, the <laughs> what, I'd, what I'd like to start, I've, I've been, uh, I've been uh, lobbied by the, uh, histor uh, the army of historians uh, in this town, namely one, um, who wants to make a reminder that any uh, fixture and fittings that are going to be done to the clock tower, that the lettering needs to be uh, redone on the Victorian and Elizabeth uh, Portraiture and the electrics are, uh, are in severe need of overhaul. Uh, so that, that would be really good if that's in the minutes. But following on to the points that have already been made, I totally, uh, I, I totally uh, concur with uh, Supertal and my, my leader, John Burden, uh, in Jane, Con uh, Jane Cribbin's contribution uh, to, this, uh, to this project. And this... this Clock Tower has been. I'm a, I'm a Northfleet lad. I've been born. I'm a born and bred uh, Northfleet lad, and I've, every time I came into that town as a kid, it's been a fixture and fitting of my life. And I do love, and I've always loved that clock tower. But I'll also reveal to you that I also lived in that area uh, for a very short time in my life. Well, not happy times, but hi, you know that's the way it goes. But the thing is, is that I did live in the area, and one of the and one of the things in that area is that it is the, at the epicenter of our diverse community. The, it, it's got wicked curry houses there. It's got wicked Turkish kebab shops there. It's got brilliant Chinese restaurant there. 
Curry Mecca is a place to die for. That's not an advertisement endorsement, by the way. But, <laughs> but you've got to remember that that clock tower is not just about a landmark to Gravesend, because this is about the Victorians in Gravesend. As you all know, or most of you should know, I am a Republican, and I do understand that the clock, the clock tower was built for the golden jubilee of Queen Victoria. I, I, totally, I, I totally understand and concur with that. But we have to remember that the Victorians were also utilitarian in their, in their, in their manner and in, in their beliefs. And the thing is, is that if you're going to have a landmark, if you're going to have a landmark, let it do something, and it tells us the time. But the thing is, is that it also tells us about their time. It's a time when they are remembered, because when you look in that time, from Victoria's reign from 1837 to 1901, it was a time when, in human, in all spheres of human activity. We led the world in trade, industry, engineering, the arts. These, these, were, these were truly glorious times. I don't go with what uh, Councillor Crafts was saying uh, in April about a golden age of our own modern times. But I, and I certainly wouldn't call the Victorian age golden. I would, I would call the Victorian age an age of, of true progress, because the, uh, because the scar, being of Irish heritage, need I say more, because that, those events in Ireland did happen. Child poverty was, was, was rampant in the Victorian age. Terrible housing was rampant yeah. in the Victorian age. But the thing is, is that, like I, like I say, that, that landmark registers a better time, a better period, a time when our country truly reached for the stars. And I tell you what, in this day and age, and in this time that we're in, that's something worth remembering. Thank you, Councillor Halpin. <coughs> As Minister, just Minister. Okay. Councillor Hurley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I echo Councillor Colin Callow's uh, comments and Councillor John Burton's comments, and I listen with great interest to Councillor Halpin's erudite comments. Um, I personally, and I'm sure all my colleagues, are delighted to say that the refurbished, um, renovated, and floodlit clock tower will always be a permanent reminder of Councillor James Prigg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hurley. Can I have Councillor Milner, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to speak. I won't speak uh, for very long because I agree with everybody that uh, has spoken now, except for um, a big thank you to Jane uh, for all that she's done in that area. Um, I remember seeing plans with Colin and Jane of the area and how beneficial it's going to be. It inspired me to knock on a few doors of the um, shopkeepers and the shop owners. And I went round with a, a petition from the council, provided with, to get some uh, signatures on there in support of putting in the bid. And um, when it's finished, it's going to look really great. And as um, Councillor Burnley said, it is one way into the town and into our borough. And that will be very welcoming. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Milner. Can I have Councillor Rawls, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, some very interesting and, uh, comments uh, and an education for parts of this evening. And very, uh, it's been very useful to hear the comments that have been made and, and certainly I'd support everything about the work that Jane did for what is essentially in Councillor Milner, Councillor Croxton and, and my ward. Um, my concern is I'm sure that the clock tower will look amazing when it's finished. <coughs> but in between times, we need to ensure that the clock tower as works. It doesn't look like an eyesore on the way into town. 
um, and I have written to the Chief Executive uh, to highlight some concerns that residents in my ward have and also businesses in the ward. Um, very grateful to Councillor Halpin for listing some of those, but beyond the food establishments in Grey's End, there are some really important businesses down that end of town. And as a gateway into town, I do hope that it doesn't just look like a construction site for the length of time that it's going to take for the work to take place. So I, I saw an example of some really good construction on the way through town earlier, with Heath just putting yellow tiles on the side of the building opposite the uh, building where it's opposite Carrick Street Car Park and having plants growing out of them. It's just something small and simple to make it look nice, but a little bit more about explaining about how that project came about, I think would be useful. Um, and you know, I think it's important that as people come into uh, the Riverside Ward that it doesn't look like an eyesore going forward. So I do hope that the council take note of that and, and ensure that there's something done about the way that it looks at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Rolls. Can I have Councillor Jassel, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can I also um, echo the comments um, in relation to Councillor Cribben? Um, the town centre initiative falls under my portfolio um, and also business development within the borough falls under my portfolio. So the town centre is quite key and paramount to that. And I know how much she actually cared about that part of town and, and, and the rest of town for that matter. But we, we shared um, a, lot of, a lot, of, lot of ideas on, on what, what should happen going forward. And, I, and Councillor Burden is quite right. Successive administrations have failed that part of town, quite frankly, going back to when I was first elected in 2007, right up until now, we've kind of plastered over the real problems that, 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 that lie in that area. Um, and some of those problems lie in Harmon Street. And Councillor Pritchard, and give a, a great deal of credit to him, um, and myself are actually trying to work out a number of schemes to get to the bottom of, of the problems down there. And I hope Councillor Burden will support, support us in that. And it's right, we do need cross-party support to get the town centre up and running and, and moving forward. Uh, but can I also um, agree with Councillor Rolls in terms of the works there? Uh, a, lot, a lot of businesses have contacted me, and uh, some of the officers are in contact with the, uh, with the group that are carrying out the works there, because unfortunately this is going to go right on through summer. Uh, it's going to have some impact on the, the North Fleet um, uh, Festival as well, which is going to pass through there. And it's going to impact a lot of new businesses that have started up, and that's that's something that we need to try and minimise. So uh, we are looking into that, and he's more than welcome to CC me into anything or any inquiries he has. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Is there anyone else would like to speak? Sorry, Councillor Shelbrook, and then Councillor Wembank. I'm very sorry, Councillor Wembank. I didn't realise. Madam Mayor, thank you very much. I um, I'd just like to concur with everything that's been said, and um, I think, having heard of that, I don't know if it's possible, but would it be possible to have a plaque affixed to the clock tower to, to just mem remember the work that they put, in, put into getting it removed? I'd also like to say that um, when I was a boy, back in the 1950s, um, my grandmother, who lived in Abbey Wood, used to bring me to uh, Grey's End on the bus. And uh, when I married and we moved into Brighton, which then was in the days of the rural district of Strood in those days, um, we used to come down here to shop, of course, and I suddenly said to my wife, this is where my grandmother brought me. She said, Cop Tower. So we got off the bus, Cop Tower, walked through the garden to the promenade. So it is a landmark. It should be removed, and I think it's a tremendous uh, memorial, really, to James Hickey. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Can we have Councillor Wembam, please? Hello. Yeah, um, it's always been the central uh, uh, part of, of Gravesham 
uh, or Gravesend life, actually. That was the parade spot for all the parades that went through Gravesend. Declarations of, the, uh, of uh, the, uh, a new monarch was always done there. And it was the hub of, of uh, Gravesend. And I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, at long last it's going to be brought back to its former glory. But also, I think, I, I may be wrong, but I, I think when John was in charge, didn't you have the lights put on the clock tower? And I must say that that went down really well, and people did notice it and remarked on how well that was. But it is a feature, and I'm glad we've all come together to appreciate it. And uh, just before I go, I, I think the Victorians were the golden age. Councillor Makam Singh. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to wish my sort of um, sentiments to Councillor Jane Cribben. It is a sort of, uh, to her credit, I believe that had some sort of works initiated. But I think what we must understand that in this chamber, we have always been united and in investing in our town, making sure that we regenerate the area, we've been very, very united. And it's very wrong to attack any particular administration to say the particular area had been neglected. No, it had not been neglected. All the successive, successive administrations have done their best to make sure that area is brought up. And as Robert Helping said, in his uh, very sort of articulate uh, fashion, that we've got multicultural shops there, which we must encourage to flourish. It is unfortunate that the, office, the post office shut down because that sort of uh, uh, reduced the flow, uh, the uh, flow of the people. But nevertheless, we've got the, the heritage quarter on board. And I'm sure that will also bring uh, more energy value to the areas like Queen Street and, uh, and the surrounding areas. And I'm really encouraged that uh, we are spending this investment on, uh, on our clock tower, which is, um, may I say, Queen Victoria is dear to me because during her, uh, if you like, empire, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, uh, uh, the only living prince, Maharaja Dilip Singh, was brought over here and he was turned into Christian to initially start with, but when he grew up, grew up went to see his mother, I'm sorry, it might not be relevant, but it is history. It is important to us because Grave is a very strong town. And when he went to see his mother, realized that he comes from a Sikh family and then he grew his beard and turban and the turban in his last place. And of course, you've seen some of you probably seen the uh, his graves in Alverdon, and the Sikhs were taking the opportunity to also sort of install his statue, which is in a place called Tetford. If you ever get a chance to visit that, please do. So I'm really encouraged again, and I'm really overwhelmed that we are all united to restore the clock tower and that area and bring it into good use. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. I'll now ask Councillor David Turner to close. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. My experience over the years is that just about every councillor in this chamber values the heritage of Gravesend, values the heritage of our borough, and Jane as strongly as anyone. Since the 1950s, when I first came down here on occasion to play some cricket, the center of gravity of the town has progressively moved west. And now, of course, the hub of the town is the new road. And this project is one element that shifts it more to the east, where it should rightfully be. But it's only one element. And as already been said, we need a strategy to do more to shift that center of gravity. The market refurbishment is one element that may contribute to that, but there's much more that needs to be done. Perhaps down Harmer Street itself, a major strategy for that, but then beyond that, to the further to the east, to develop that. So that somehow, 
the whole focus of people when they come to Gravesend is the clock tower and that area of the town are not down west, sort of, I wouldn't say utilitarian if you like, but sort of, you know, the place that had to be developed in the 50s for a new town. Um, so I, I clearly, I'm glad that everybody supports the project. Um, I do hope that we can get together to think of a strategy, because it's not easy, you're talking about major, major investment, and that doesn't mean just through the council, someone's got to come in and put money down Harmer Street, but we've got to think of a strategy to develop Harmer Street and to make the clock tower a focus and everything around it new and vibrant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> now. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you very much. To consider questions from members of the council of which notice has been given under council procedure, rule 14. None have been received, Madam Mayor. We now come to appointments to committee, uh, which uh, obviously the Labour group have been affected. So, Councillor Lynn Milner be appointed as member of the Appointments Board. Are we agreed? Noted. And Councillor Susan Howes be appointed as member of the Regulatory Board. Right. Next is, is uh, I don't think there's any other business. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just have one announcement to make, and that is for Jane's memorial service. Uh, Lee has asked us to remind everybody that it is on Monday the 11th, and it is at St. George's Church, and it is at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know what the dress code is, it doesn't say, but probably John, he'll communicate with you and you will let us know what we've got, what what he wants. Uh, sorry, clothes. I didn't want. I bought a new bikini. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just being told there is a reception at the civic centre afterwards as well. So thank you all. You for my first council meeting and you've all played nicely so thank you. <laughs>